So the other day, while I was streaming, my friend put this emote in my Twitch chat. And I jokingly said, hey, I should make an emote like that of myself, just going So today, I would like to show you how I would go about creating this animated emote. Oh yeah, now that you know that I stream, follow me on Twitch. So this is a clip that was taken during that specific VOD. I think around here, you can see the emote there. I look at chat, <laughs> see it, and I do this. And I have a Chrome extension that allows me to slow down the video a bunch, but you can also use the settings here and go 0.25. Also make sure that it's the highest quality, which it is, I stream in 720p. And we're just gonna look for like good screenshots. Very simple, we just need one mouth closed, one mouth open. I need to do big eyes. <laughs> Looking at the camera was maybe too creepy. So I'm gonna wait until I look away, there you go. So this, I'm going to Windows key, Shift and S for the snipping tool, but you can also print screen. You can use whatever you want to screenshot. It'll give me this. Nice. From there, I'm gonna open up uh, Photoshop. You know what? Photoshop is actually being weird right now. So you're in luck. We're just gonna do the alternative with a free website called photop.com. I'm gonna click on new project. I'm gonna make sure that my project is a square. So we'll do a quote unquote high quality version. That's gonna be 400 by 400. We can call it the prefix of my Twitch emotes is a Gael La Pop. That will be the name of the emote and click create. Photop is basically Photoshop, but there's ads. The Photop team were nice enough to actually give me an account so I can probably remove the ads. There we go. So since the image is in our clipboard, I can straight up control V like you would paste anything else. And then we'll worry about the size later. Let's try to get our mouth open here. <laughs> this looks awful. <laughs> so once again, I'm gonna Windows Shift S, copy this, Control V. Now I'm not gonna lie, the process of making GIFs in Photoshop or Photop is not something that I usually do. I like using like Adobe After Effects or Adobe Premiere, basically video software because it's easier to control timelines and and whatnot. But in this case, uh, I think it's simple enough that we can just do this. Now what I did here is I lowered the opacity to 50% so I can just match them. We can use the white in the eyes or just the nose to make sure and then I can bump that up. Okay, now what I can also do is play around with the visibility to make sure that that's good enough. <laughs> now, since it's gonna be an emote, uh, there's a couple of things to consider. First of all, contrast. It's gonna be super tiny, so if you want people to understand what's going on on a super tiny thing, you want it to be pretty high contrast. So what I'm gonna do is add an adjustment layer, and I don't know if you can see, it's right, it's down there, look at my finger. You're gonna see a half circle, and it says new adjustment layer. This is a way to have like, a layer on top that controls like the brightness, the vibrance, the saturation, anything you want without applying that effect directly to your layers. So it, this is non-destructive editing, if you will. I'm gonna go with curves just because uh, curves tend to bump up the saturation a little bit when you make an S shape. So I can go high like this. Basically highlights are gonna be up top and then shadows are gonna be at the bottom. And I can create an S and boop, there you go. I have a higher contrast image and just play around with this until it looks okay without being completely burnt. Burnt is like this, right? <laughs> we wanna get pretty close. Okay, something else that I wanna do is obviously remove the background. I'm gonna click on that layer one and I'm gonna find out how to remove the background. Personally, I'm an old school Photoshop kind of guy, so I would probably go and select the color uh, pink in the background and then remove that and blah, blah, blah. But nowadays things are so advanced that if I go and select my mask tool, my quick selection tool right here, you press W, there's something up there called select subject, just like in Photoshop. So I'm gonna click on that and then wait a little bit. And there it is, <laughs> there it is, selected the face. Isn't that amazing? Anyways, uh, back to the bottom of the layer list, right there, you're gonna see a rectangle with a little circle in the middle. And that's your mask, click add raster mask, and boom, you have transparency. Is it perfect? Not necessarily, you would technically want to spend some time to make it perfect, but I'm just doing a tutorial. If I remove the background, you can see, there you go. Let's do the same thing for that layer two. Turn that on, make sure you select it, go select subject, perfect, and then click on add raster mask. There you go. Now you can see there's a little bit of like artifacts. Uh, you can see the gray parts here. I think those are parts of like my chair in the first one, but if we turn on the second one, 
they are cut out. And I don't worry too much about that because I'm actually gonna make it way bigger. When it comes to face emotes, you want to zoom in as much as possible so people can determine that, oh, I'm looking at a face right now. So I'm gonna select both of them. I'm gonna hold shift and in the layer list, I'm gonna make sure well, I can turn both of them on. I'm going to make sure they are selected. Now, to do the transform, you can press Control alt t But if you're in full screen, like if I press F11, for example, on any website, really, I can do Control t This is the exact same shortcut as Photoshop. You just need to be in full screen for it to work. Otherwise, Control alt t That's because Chrome and a bunch of browsers will open up a new tab if you just press Control t So I'm going to grab a corner here, make it bigger and then kind of center it like that. Now, something else that I wanna do is add a certain filter to make it more clear, right? Cause right now it's a little blurry. So I'm gonna select the top one, go to filters up here, and I'm gonna find unsharp mask. And you can see the preview here. All you have to do is play around with the radius, basically how much definition you want on that filter. You don't want too, too much. I think that's nice. Let me turn that off and let's add it. Well, you can see the difference here. One seems higher quality than the other. Also, you can definitely zoom in. I'm gonna hold Alt and scroll with my mouse, but this is like bad practice when you're working on emotes to like have them full screen. It's better to have them small because that's what it's gonna look like in chat. And we're gonna add the exact same filter to that bottom layer. So filters, and there's a cool thing called last filter up here and you can just click, there you go. Now they match. One final thing that I would like to do is um, exaggerate this a little bit. I would like the mouth to actually be bigger on this one, so I'm gonna select it and I'm going to go to filter and I'm going to go to liquify. Basically, I want a brush that is pretty much the size of the mouth or a little bit bigger and I wanna select something like bl blow. <laughs> I didn't know it was called blow. The one that looks like it would expand it from the middle. So size, we want that big like this. There we go, oh, a little bit, bit bigger. We're gonna click and hold, right? It's going, to, it's going to affect it while you're clicking and holding. Make sure you try to center it. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> this is ridiculous, but it's great. Click okay, and there you have it. So <laughs> this is so dumb. Uh, you can hold space bar to click and drag. I'm gonna select both of them holding shift. Uh, control T if you're in full, full screen. If you're not, control Alt T, and I'm gonna make it bigger. You can hold Alt if you wanna size from the middle. Basically, I like to do from, from the chin to the forehead when it comes to framing, and we'll put it a little bit like that. Turn off the background. Okay, now, just like Photoshop, Photo P actually lets you create animated stuff. So with the bottom layer selected, you wanna go to Layer, and you want to go to Animation, and click Make Frames. So once you click make frames, Photo P is gonna change your layer name and you're gonna see underscore A underscore. That is how Photo P basically knows that, hey, this is a frame and an animation. It's automatically gonna say, hey, layer one is one frame and then layer two is a different frame. So now make sure both of them are visible, that the background is turned off and go to file, export as, and you wanna find GIF. And you can see Photo P knows, hey, it's an animation. And it gives you the option to play around with the speed. If you want it to be <laughs> super slow, you can do that. But also the resolution. If you want to export it in multiple sizes, well, you can do it directly here. Then all you have to do is click save and save. Now I'm gonna go to Twitch and upload it. I'm gonna click here, find that emote right there and click open. Wait a couple seconds. And just like that, we have our Gal La Pop emote click upload and we're done so photop.com as i like to call it photopia when it's very very simple stuff like that just put your frames in different layers click make frames and it will do it in order export as a gif and you're done